let's now focus on lab grown diamonds is this a space that's set for big disruption and if yes what impact is it going to have on existing jewelry brands like titan what about the new incumbents or the new uh, players coming into the market well let's uh, tell you what's the latest development first up trend has launched its new lab grown diamond jewelry brand comb this uh, marks a significant entry into the sustainable luxury market in fact, Coating Institutional is quite uh, optimistic on POM. It says that uh, this business has the potential to pioneer broad-based adoption of lab-grown diamond jewellery in India. So is this indeed going to be a big disruption? Yesterday, by the way, could be a coincidence. But anyway, as Trent was charging higher 8%, there was some pressure on Titan. We've got Avnish Roy, ED of uh, Nuvama Institutional Equities, as well as Pooja Sheth. Uh, Pooja Sheth Madhavan, founder and MD of uh, Limelight Lab-grown diamonds with us. Uh, lady and gentlemen, thanks very much for uh, joining in. Pooja, so let's uh, start with understanding the, the basics of the market and how things are stacking up right now. You know, in all our conversation with the most of the listed jewellery companies, we do talk about how they're experimenting with lab-grown and what impact that's ha having on their uh, natural diamond sales, whether it's uh, solitaires or studded jewellery. You tell us, how big is the market now? What are the growth numbers that lab-grown diamonds have tracked? And what is the expectation? What do you expect in the segment? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. And... Uh... So in terms of the global growth, uh, I think lab grown diamond, uh, I mean, diamond as an industry, you know, United States stands as a benchmark to understand, uh, you know, what happens to the diamond industry because the largest consumption of diamonds has happened in uh, the U.S. And if you see uh, the current trend in the U.S., 50% of sales are now lab grown in the U.S. Uh, the lab grown diamond market is a global $15 billion market. Uh, it's captured close to 20% of the global uh, gems and jewelry, uh, you know, uh, market share, and uh, even in India, we are seeing, uh, you know, a 15 to 20 percent year-on-year growth uh, in lab-grown diamonds consumption, in lab-grown diamonds acceptance. So, uh, I do believe that the next biggest consumption potential that exists for lab-grown diamonds after the United States is most certainly India. But, but Pooja, so to expand on that point, you're saying the growth in India is 15 to 20 percent. The question is, is this at all, at all, I mean, coming at the expense of natural diamonds or is this incrementally growing the market? They're catering to a very different market segment, right? But I think the yes. question that the stock market is beginning to ask is that whether there will be some cannibalization because of changing customer behavior and preferences, at least at the mass affluent level. Uh, most certainly, uh, it's a combination. Uh, at this point in time, whilst we're seeing incremental demand, so in India, uh, you know, uh, the data suggests that only less than 5% of Indian women have actually been able to afford or wear diamonds. Uh, the balance 95% has continuously aspired to wear diamonds but never gotten hold of them. So uh, there's a combination of the 5% also today that is, you know, sort of procuring lab grown diamonds, particularly in the larger size solitaires, you know, somebody that already has a one carat solitaire aspired to a two carat, a three carat or a five carat is now started looking at lab grown as an opportunity. Plus, you know, new Indian consumers that have always aspired for diamonds but never gotten hands on them are also sort of, uh, you know, increasingly moving towards lab grown diamonds as a second. I mean, uh, even that 5%, less than 5, okay. I mean, uh, but 5 is also maybe too high. Uh, uh, but it's less than 5, as Pooja said. So, Nabnish mentioned about pricing a couple of times. I wanted a couple of basic details. What's the price difference currently between a lab grown as well as, a, uh, you know, the original diamond, so to call it, price difference? And also, is there price stability now? Because as Abnish mentioned as well, the fear was in the last one year, suddenly the price has crashed 40, 50, 60, 70%. So, pricing and price difference. Please go ahead. Yeah, no, yes, a couple of things. One is that the price, uh, you know, fall that we speak about uh, largely has been capped at 50%. Uh, secondly, that has happened at the wholesale level uh, and at the trade level, but not at the retail level. The retail level has seen price stability. I mean, Limelight as a retail brand, we have been existing in India for the last five years. Uh, we have 30 plus stores in the country. And uh, we have, uh, you know, seen retail prices constantly stabilize, um, you know, over the last five years. So what has happened is, and actually it has not been a combination of uh, oversupply and less demand. It has in fact been rationalization of profits. So initially what happened is there were lesser players, lesser growers who were producing lab grown diamonds in the market. And therefore, naturally by the instincts of any industry, they priced the product at, 
you know, a very high price, you know. So something that was selling at, uh, the costing at, you know, let's say $100 a carat was selling at $400 a carat. That, you know, as and when entrants started coming in, competition started coming in, that super normal profits is what has, you know, uh, resulted in the price decline. So the super normal profit between 400 and 100 has now come down to a 120 dollars per carat, uh, you know, uh, selling price in the wholesale market compared to 100 dollar cost. So uh, the intention was uh, that the super normal profits were reducing uh, uh, rather than there being a you know lack of demand and oversupply situation. Yes, in the last three four months there has been you know economic pressures on the U.S. which has sort of subdued the demand for diamonds in general. That's why we have seen a fall off in pricing of the natural diamonds also by 40% in the same breath. And we have seen, you know, a decline in prices of lab phones. But that's largely been rationalization of profits, which the trade was already prepared for. The retail level, there has always been stability. And going forward, we'll see further stability in the lab road diamond industry because the profits have now rationalized to a normal 20-50%. All right. Uh, this is a discussion which uh, I think we're only scratching the surface of and we'll have both of you and others join in as well over the next many uh, days and weeks. Abnish and Pooja, thanks very much, both of you, for joining us.